Hey, what's happening everybody? This is Robert the Leather Cowboy right here at Premier Leather Crafters in the Dirty South with part three, part three of our video, Do It Yourself Sheridan, uh, from start to finish, how I, I go in and I show, I'm showing you guys how I do my artwork to the transferring of the pattern, to the preserving of the patterns and everything from A to Z. Now, again, uh, just to do a recap, to where if you guys have followed along with video one and two where where I did the drawings and we did the saving and wrapping our drawing in the cellophane tape uh, to preserve the the uh, the print. Now doing it this way, uh, let me shoot this in here right quick. Doing it this way, uh, you really don't have to transfer this to your um, to the tracing film. That's the word that I'm looking for. You really don't have to use tracing film to transfer this because we I've already, or if you guys are following along, I, we've already taped it with the packaging tape. So that will preserve it. The only thing about doing it this way is you also have to tape the backside too as well. So when you lay this on top of your leather, um, the the casing from the leather does not wet the back of the paper so um, let's go ahead and do that and take this off real quick on the back side so we can go ahead and do our transferring and nothing about this is rocket science or anything like that we just want to put a couple of strips of our tape just to preserve the paper. Now you can transfer this to your transfer film if you so choose. Um, it will uh, save it a little bit longer. And I'm just gonna put a cup, I'm gonna put about four strips on here just to make sure that um, it doesn't, and it really, that might be overkill so, um, before I move in and adjust the camera, I'm just going to go ahead and take this off, trim all of the tape off, because you really don't need all of that. And I guess I can go ahead and, and we're just trimming off the tape, the extra tape. So, let me go ahead and angle the camera now and adjust the lighting on this so you guys can follow along and see exactly what I'm doing here. So give me just a second. Okay, so here we are, we have it laid out and I'm just trimming off the extra tape off of my pattern. So, cause we really don't need that part. And then I have to get back to work. And all of this does is, again, it just saves you from, it saves you from uh, using so much of your transfer film. And it's just an economical way of doing it. Because cellophane tape, you can buy this, this packaging tape for like a dollar at the dollar store. Qu easier than you can buy a yard or however many yards you need uh, of tracing film. So let's go ahead and case our leather and get our leather prepped and ready. And all I'm doing here is just casing. And you guys already know I like to do both sides so that the, the water we use will draw toward the center of the, the leather to get it a properly case. Now somebody else might tell you something different and that's entirely fine. There's nothing it's necessarily written in stone about uh, you'll hear various techniques about how to, to case uh, but this is just what works for me to do both sides of the leather. And you can see the water as it starts to absorb up into 
your, your piece. So being that this piece is not as long as our artwork, so what I'm going to do is uh, just do part of this so you guys can know about the transferring. Now, one key note about transferring your pattern is to have uh, the, the modeling spoon that I like to use has a ball stylus on the end. Uh, and that's this one here. Uh, and I don't know what I did with my glasses. So I can give you guys the numbers off of this. So I'm going to try to read this. Good God of mine, I'm going to try to read this. But this is a, um, a Tandy tool. Oh, wow. Let me pause this again and go get my glasses so you guys can, uh, I can give you the proper numbers. Okay, this particular one doesn't have any numbers on it. So, let me, uh, this one doesn't have any particular numbers on it, but this is a Tandy tool. And all you have to do is, if you have a Tandy's catalog or whatever catalog that you guys are ordering your tools from, all you have to do is just look up a stylus ball is and it has the one with the ball on the end which works great um especially when you're dealing with the paper and we're gonna have to move this around to where it will line up yes and i'm just gonna transfer as much as this as i can and you're just gonna go over your lines Now, let me pause this video again because this will take, this will save up a lot of time on the recording. So, uh, all you guys have to do is just uh, trace this out and then I'm going to go ahead and finish this up, tracing mine out, and then I'll be right back. All right, everybody, we're back. And I just transferred all of the, uh, as much of the pattern as I could. Uh, on this little short piece, just a, a little scrap piece of leather. And so, uh, trying to get my lighting adjusted so you guys can see. Now, once you get to this point in this part here, uh, now we're actually ready to carve. Now, let me interject, in, interject this part right here about Sheridan. Now, the, the one key factor about Sheridan, and if you're gonna get off into doing Sheridan design, you have to have small tools, uh, be it beveling tools, or backgrounding tools, or whatever have you. You have to have small tools, uh, especially in a lot of your detailing. And let me show you best on the, on the uh, design here. When you're getting inside the parts of the scroll and the leaves, these are going to require small beveling tools or small backgrounding tools. And that's one thing that I found out in the researching of um, the different designs and art forms that are out there. Uh, I, one reason why I'm partial to the Versailles, uh, Versailles uh, artwork is it's not so compacted and tight to where you have to have uh, so many small beveling tools. You can do the same thing with, uh, uh, is you can have larger background and tools that are cover more area as opposed to the small ones now you guys can see uh, and i'll show you a few of my background and tools and so you can have an idea how small you're going to have to have to work and these are what we're dealing with you see how small those are those are way small they're almost the size of a pencil head cap you see but to do to make your sheridan uh, really stand out is the smallness of the tools in the background and work and now we're going to go off into uh, what to tool first and what to tool second a lot of people have those different questions and things about uh, how they want to get things tooled and done now myself I like to do my flowers and my leaves first because those are the main focal parts of your tooling work so now I'm going to case my leather one more time 
just to make sure that it's going to be soft enough to um, to actually go into the carving part of it. And then we'll get off into maybe another video. I'll get off into the lift technique and all of that stuff, how to raise your pedals up and give it that real 3D effect. Now, up until recently, I just got off into ceramic blades. So for years, I've been using the metal blades or the metal angle blades. And I finally pulled the trigger on, on buying the ceramic blades. If you don't have one of these, these are pretty much uh, a staple in your or a main weapon in your in your tool arsenal, and you don't have to sharpen it. All you have to do is strop it, so you don't have to worry about ever losing the angle or or anything like that. And but now the one thing about these ceramic blades, they are super super delicate. And you really don't want to be dropping these things either on your slab or on the floor or whatever because once you chip it, it's, 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 it's pretty much a wrap on that deal right there. So let's get off into carving now. But again, get you a ceramic blade. And these things cut wonderful. And it just pulls through this leather, man, like a hot knife through butter. And that's one thing that I love about it. And with that angle tip, it really gets in those tight curves like you want it to get, get into. It really gets in those tight curves. I don't want to keep pausing the video to keep doing this, but uh, let's, uh, let's just try to make this as quick as possible. And one thing I think a lot of crafters love about this ceramic blade is that it really cuts deep and clean depending on the amount of pressure that you use. But a lot of crafters really fell in love with the ceramic blade. It just took me a while to bite the, to well, I guess to, to drink the Kool-Aid on these ceramic blades because how I learned was on a, on a um with the metal blades. I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting the scrolls because this is save time on the video. And a grape, that's another thing. If you get you a swivel knife where the head turns, because you can really start getting into uh some of the some of the turns you guys will have to turn your blade all the way around. <clears throat> Now, one thing that, uh, let me enter, uh, throw this part in here too. I like to cut away from, from my flowers because when you start to do the tooling work around your flowers, you can, uh, you really won't have to worry about that stopping point so much from your knife cuts if you're too, if you start cutting away from your flower. And again, that's just my 
uh, technique to where I cut away from the flower. Because a lot of times you can see in a lot of people's uh, uh, design and work to where you can tell where they start to cut. And that's one thing that, that will separate you from a lot of other crafters is having that ability to know where the cut start and stops at. And again, when you're doing your own design and work, it kind of, uh, let me drink some coffee first, sorry. When you're doing your own, even in the center of the flower, I start to wear uh, from the center part and cut out. Now, once you're into a cut, you really don't want to stop in the middle of that cut because it, it'll, it'll basically give you a way. So you want to keep the flow going as much as you possibly can. Now, let me also say this real quick. The only way you can truly tell how your artwork is going to stand out is you have to, eventually you will have to put it on leather to see how it's going to work. Um, but the great part is the more you do it and the more comfortable you get, the more you will start to um, get comfortable enough to where you can draw directly on two the leather. I remember when uh, I was first starting out, I used to be so proud of my little drawing on paper, and I used to ask Dee Dee all the time, you know, how does this look? How does this look? And she'll say, put it on leather. Put it on leather. It was always put it on leather. So to get there, to get there, you will have to start trusting yourself enough to where you will start putting it on the leather and to see how it's going to to look. And now we're getting into the bottom part of our next flower. So I'm going to cut it right there. Okay. All right. Cool. So. Again, always protect that ceramic blade and make sure that it's never dropped or anything. So let's switch over here to our slab and start to get off into some tooling work. Let's set this camera up to where it won't fall. Okay, adjust the light. Now, <clears throat> our beveling and I'm gonna have to choose a small bevel. And the bevel that I'm using here is a craft tool. Um, let me get, this, get you guys these numbers. And I said, like I said, you always have to use a small one. This is a craft tool B200, uh, a, a steep beveler. Now this has been modified a little bit uh, to make it even more steep. And some tools that you buy from Tandy, you'll find yourself modifying them a little bit so and that's only to your crafting level to to where how uh when you're doing your tooling work that's that's strictly up to you how you want to do that so let's case this one more time and i'm going to start with my flowers first to get them to where I, I want them to be. Make this as smooth as possible. And 
and you want this is what we call walking. You basically just walking the tool around your around your flower. And I'm tooling the outside parts of this because I want my flower to stand out. Man, that ceramic blade really cuts like nobody's business. And again, small tools is what's needed in Sheridan. You have to have small tools. I put that too close to the edge, but that's okay. And don't be afraid to hit it. This is what I call like rapid fires. You know, and you just constantly tooling. And you're getting all the way around that flower. Because you want your flower to, to stand out. Of course you want all of it to stand out. But you really want to get off into doing, making sure that that, that part stands out. Now, if you start to see the lines of your tools, don't fret at that. I'll tell you don't fret at it because it can all be fixed with your modeling spoon to smooth that out. That can all be fixed and worked from your modeling spoon. To me it can. Now, one thing that my teacher, uh, Chance, has always told me was every line doesn't have to be cut. Some things you can look at, and again, your brain can, your brain will automatically tell, your eyes will automatically tell your brain what you're looking at. <coughs> Excuse me. can buy steep bevelers now from Tandy. Tandy does have a line to where you can buy your steep bevelers from and they are the pro craftsman tool. A little bit more expensive but you can take a six dollar tool and modify it a little bit and all you have to do now I have a belt sander that I use and I use a little fine grit, fine grit uh, belt sander fine grit belt and I'll just sand sand this back at, at my right pitch or pitch that I think would be great and usually what I'll do I'll take a, 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 a fine point marker and I'll mark where I want my pitch to, to be and then I'll sand that down until I hit my line or hit my mark and then I'll turn around and take a polishing uh, uh, belt and then I'll put that smooth finish and edge back on top of it. So now we have our flower tooled and you will know that it's the proper, um, I would say beveling because you can see the, the, the darkening around the flower. And that's where is the, the tool itself has, has burnished the leather a little bit. And what I'm going to do now is come right back with another um, rounded beveler. Uh, let me find it. There it is. And I'm going to start right here in the folds of my, my flower. And this is going to just give that flower a little bit 
more character. Just gonna make it pop a little bit harder. That's all that it's gonna do is just make it pop a little bit harder. And a lot of a lot of crafters make the mistake of choke up on that. You don't have to choke up on your hammer, your on your mallet so much. Go ahead and use the whole weight of your mallet to give you a a uh, better. To me, it gives it better control. And I'm going to come back with the folds, doing the folds of my flower with my small beveler again. And this could be one of those cases too, to where you can take your, your modeling spoon and, and do the folds to where it's a nice subtle flow as, and not so much beveling work. Your leather is already cased, so it's soft enough for you to do that with. And there you have it, where you can see the folds of the flower and all of that, different things like that. So we're at the 26 minute mark. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and put my seeding, my cedar, use my cedar stamp. And I'm going to put the center part of my flower there. Uh, I think I'll just use this one here. And the one that I'm using now is a uh, J547 uh, Tandy Craft Tube. And it's a cedar. The J547. I'm just going to put that right in the middle of my flower. So here we are already at this point. So you guys stay tuned for the next video and then we'll go in and I'll go in and I'll start showing you um, about the, the um, not the background, but we're going to bevel around our scroll and stems and then we'll go in and finish up with the background and work on the next part. All right. This is Cowboy Premier Leather Crafters. Let me move this light out the way. Cowboy Le Premier Leather Crafters down here in the dirty, dirty. Y'all. Come back and see us again. See you guys on the other side.